God, just one more praise. Come on, if you're expecting something tonight, come on, if, come on, if you're desperate for a move of God to transform your life, turn your world upside down so you could go out there and turn someone else's world upside down, there's a time that you got to start off with a shout before the walls come down. Can anybody give a shout to Jesus Christ? the Savior, the resurrection, and the life, the healer, the deliverer, the answer for this world. One more praise. Come on. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Tonight, God can do anything but fail. And apart from him, we fail. And the scripture says that with him, we turn into more than conquerors. You know what that means? We turn into victorious people. Is there anybody tired of losing? Come on. Serving the losing team. Come on. Tonight's your night. This is our third night. Sunday morning is going to be our fourth service. Um, Ivan Tate's coming out. And what he's going to be doing, he's going to be prophesying. You want to come and get a word from God. God doesn't teach you so you know. He teaches you to do. This is a place to get an impartation of doers. We've been empowered. Isaiah Saldivar has been empowered not to ju just know stuff, but to go out there and do stuff. How many understand that the same God that called him, the same God that called me, is the same God that's calling you. And when he says, come follow me, be my disciple. And I'll make you fishers of men. I'll use you to save people, give hope to people that are, that are hopeless, that are suicidal. I'll use you to set them free. Is there anybody that's saying, I want to be free so I could do something. Free to serve. Free to do ministry. And tonight, I pray that it's the beginning of a new level. Are you guys ready to go to another level? We're not, we're, we're not coming tonight to come to a service and treat this as an event and then we go home like a concert. God wants to transform our lives, our marriages, our thinking forever and make us, come on, make us like him, make us world changers that people would know there's something different about you. Yeah, I spent time with Jesus. And now he's turning my world, and if you keep hanging around me, he's going to turn your world upside down. I just can't. Come on, this is a real thing. God is calling you to do some great things for him. Uh, me and Isaiah were talking in the back, and, and I remember when we first started this church, our first service. Who came? Everybody from the hood. I had every homeless, almost every homeless person like a fine was there. And they didn't come for Jesus. They came for um, chicken, rice, and beans. That's what I offered them. But they got Jesus at the end. I told all my friends, like, we're going to have a lot of people that are hurting, broken, lost. People are going to come drunk. They're going to come high. They're going to come carrying. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be crazy. Because we're inviting the people from our city to our church. And they came. People from the neighborhood came. And I, and I remember making a call for, for people not to join a church. But for people to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I, rem, I seen something. 400 people from the neighborhood that never heard Jesus came forward. And what ended up happening, my, our first service, when we started that church, I didn't come from a church that 
practice deliverance. I knew it existed, but I never seen it. And I remember that first service, people started manifesting, falling out, and demons started talking through people. And I go, God, what do you do? I, I like, I, what do I do? Like, I, I know how to say, so I, I just started saying, get out. And then the, super, the demons go, ah, get, and then some of them will come out. But the power of God showed up, not for people to come to church, but for people to have an encounter with the same Jesus that set people free, raised the dead. And I, I want you to understand, you don't need to know a lot, but some of you are waiting, you're waiting for something to happen. And God says, start moving and I'll make something happen. I can't confirm non-action. I can't confirm any words you're not saying. If you want to start seeing God use you, come on, allow some people, go to some people outside the four walls of this church that need Jesus and start sharing and you're going to start seeing Jesus show up and confirm you and what you're saying with signs and wonders. Come on, we serve a God that's the same yesterday, today and forever. And, and the Word of God says, there's more for us than against us. And today's a great day. Me and my wife are celebrating 33 years of marriage, actually today. This is our anniversary. What'd you guys do? Come to church. For us, this is our life. And there's no greater reward than to be here serving you tonight and you being here celebrating with Jesus. Thank you for showing up. We got people in the overflow right now. We got people, we got the Arizona church turning in right now. And we got people all over tuning in right now. Let's give them, come on, let them know that we're happy that they're tuning in all over. All our overflows are full. But also today, um, they overturn Roe Wade. Come on. They overturn it. It's not federal law anymore. Come on. Let's give God some praise. That's a good anniversary gift. Come on. We're gaining ground. Somebody's interceding. Come on. Somebody's praying and somebody's listening. For that to happen right now as the world is turning upside down. Come on. We got to give God. God is moving. You know what you do when you get a victory? Take it and hold it and go for more. Come on, take it, hold it, and go for more. Come on, take it, hold it, and go for more. God wants to take you from glory to glory. That's where we're at. We're fighting. So our next series starting Wednesday night, we're going to be talking about everything. We're going to talk about the last days. We're going to talk about the abortion. We're going to talk about transgender stuff. We're going to talk about every last day subject you could come up with. And we're going to tell you what the Word of God says. Come on. Anybody want to hear what the Word of God says? This Sunday, come hear a prophet. Come on, prophet. How many want to start hearing from God? Now, if you're here for the first time, say, what kind of church are we? Well, we're a church, of course, loves Jesus. And we love you absolutely. And we believe in the power of God because... It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit, God's power, can your life ever be transformed. With, unless you get an encounter with Jesus, your mind can change, but you're, you're not going to be transformed from the inside out. Tonight, you're not gonna, you're, we're not offering you religion. We're offering you an encounter with the creator of the universe, and he wants to live inside of you. Come on. And when he moves in, he kicks out the addiction. Come on. He kicks out the abuse. He kicks out the perversion. He kicks out, come on. He kicks out that unworthiness. He kicks out every single thing that's been depressing you, having you pull a fear. Come on. We serve a God that kicks out the tormentor. For this purpose, the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. One more praise to that Jesus that destroyed everything you're facing. So, and, I'll say this, and most of all, we're a disciple-making church. It's one thing to get delivered. But if you don't get discipled and fill yourself with the Word of God and learn how to fight spiritually, you're going to be fighting and losing the same ground over and over in your life. You don't need to get delivered a thousand times. You need to learn how to get delivered 
set free and hold your freedom. And we're going to teach you how to do that. So we got classes here. These are discipleship classes where they're named Holy Wars 1. This is what happens. In Holy Wars 1, you're going to get 10 years worth of growth in four weeks. I'm telling you. God gave me this when I was struggling Christian. He goes, these are, these are the problems. You got too much worldliness in you. And this is the problem. You don't have a lust issue. You got a worldly issue. So we just start cutting everything out. Teach you how to fast. Teach you how to throw away the junk that actually tempts you. Lead me not into temptation. So we teach you for four weeks how to fight spiritually. The second set of classes, Holy Wars 2, is freedom. And that's inner healing and deliverance. So we teach you how demons come in. We're going to get rid of them. And then we're going to show you how to help people get delivered. I'm going to understand that. Then we're going to teach you after that how to live an abundant, prosperous Christian life, Holy Warriors 3. And then after that, we have, we have Leadership University where we teach you how to be a leader. Come on. God doesn't want you just be a follower. He wants you to lead people to Jesus. And we're going to show you how to do that. Let's give the Lord a big hand one more time. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Let's give. I, you know, Isaiah, he's been coming here for years now and... And we, I, I don't even know when we booked you, probably almost a year ago maybe. We booked you to come out and, and God's done so much in his life, you know, in the last two years online. I mean, he has like a million subs people that are following him right now. Um, and he just made a decision to just follow Jesus and do what he asked him to do. And God was going to do the miracle. Guys, stop complicating this stuff. You don't need to be a genius. You just need to learn how to say, yes, sir, and just do it. Well, it doesn't look good. Forget about that. Just do what he tells you. He knows what he's doing. If he tells you to, to throw out your net on the let, right side of the boat, just do it. He knows where the fish are. So he did what God called him to do. And many of you are seeing him online now, and, and you're here for a breakthrough. And I want you to get this. He's only going to give you Jesus. And then you're going to get Jesus. You're going to learn how to walk with Jesus. You're going to learn how to be a disciple. And then you're going to learn how to make disciples for Jesus. Come on. We need some reproduction right now. Everybody's converting everybody. We don't even know what gender we are today. It's time for Christians. You have the true identity. God's called you to be. Come on. You know who you are. A child of God. And you've got a father in heaven. Let's give Isaiah a way where will outreach welcome. And let him know you're ready to receive from God tonight. Tonight's your night. This is your moment. Isaiah. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, we got to crank this way up. There we go. Way up, way up, brother. Where's Mike finding over? There we go. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. He is worthy of our worship. Somebody is going to battle tonight. Somebody is overcoming tonight. And I hear the Lord saying the devil is losing territory. The devil is losing in your mind. The devil is losing in your marriage. The devil is losing in your finances. The devil is a loser in Jesus' name. Somebody is breaking out. That's good. Thank you so much. You guys are good. Thank you. Come on, God is breaking out tonight. Maybe you just need to loosen up a little bit and tell your neighbor, just go out and apologize. Say, I'm sorry because tonight I'm going to battle. Tonight I'm going to war. That there is something that I'm fighting for. I'm not praising for no reason. I'm not shouting for no reason. I'm not fired up for no reason. I'm not here because I need to sweat some weight off. I'm here to declare an all-out war against the kingdom of darkness. Come on, something's breaking free. You guys are good. You guys are good. Thank you. You're good. Thank you. Come on, somebody's breaking through tonight. Somebody's shattering something. Depression is breaking tonight in Jesus' name. Anxiety, I know they've given you a thousand pills, but there is only one pill that you need, and that is the gospel, and that is the power of God unto salvation. There is only one addiction that you need, and that's to be addicted to the power and presence of Almighty God. Some of you came in addicted to pills, and 
and you're going to leave addicted to the present. Some of you came in addicted to the bottle. You came in addicted to, to, to Jack Daniels, and you're going to leave addicted to the God of Daniel. You came in strung out, but you're going to leave in the power and the presence of God. Tonight is a night of interference. God has given us the ministry of interference where we are going to interfere with every plan, every strategy, every demonic agenda. I don't care what LGBTQ plus A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I don't know about CNN or Fox News, but I know about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I know what the Bible says, that there is real power, that there is real authority, that there is real influence in the Spirit of God. Real breakthrough happening tonight. Not in theory, not psychologically, not mentally, not physically. I'm talking about tonight there is something happening. I felt it the moment I walked in. Something is changing in the unseen realm. There is breakthrough in the invisible realm. I'm just going to prophesy this over some of you that you're going to go home and your child that's been strung out for years is going to say, Mom, I don't know where you were last night, but an angel visited me and that crack house an angel visited me in that whore house something happened last night at about 753 and you're going to remember I was praying for you to come back to God I was praying that the angels of the Lord would begin to make war I'm telling you that you're going to see in 10 years the result of your prayer tonight that many of your interests to your grandparents praying for you, your interest to a loved one praying for you, that you are the result of somebody that brought your name to an altar and said, God, I'm going to keep bugging you. There is something about bugging God. There is something about harassing God. There is something about bugging the judge, saying, I prayed for 20 years for this breakthrough, but tonight I'm coming again. I prayed for 20 years for this addiction, but tonight I'm Come on, help me tonight. I'm coming again. I prayed for 10 years for my marriage to be restored. But tonight, I'm coming again. I wonder if I have anybody that says, I'm going to bug the judge. I'm tired of being paralyzed. I'm t I hear the Lord saying, I'm coming to those that are paralyzed. I'm coming to those that are crippled. It's time to get up and walk. It's time to live this thing out for real. Now is the day of salvation. So we're coming to interfere with the devil's agenda. And let me just warn you as we get started tonight, there may be something in you getting mad. There may be something in you. In fact, I'll just warn you, there will be, and the devil hates us, I feel it, but there will be a voice telling you, it's too hot in here, it's too loud in here. I'm annoyed with this or annoyed with that or the light or the screeching or the loud noise or my ears or this or that. And you're gonna have every complaint. Have you ever wondered why you never complained at the club? I thought about this one day. Why is it whenever I read, I fall asleep, I think about food, I distracted? Why is it I can't spend five minutes in the place of prayer, yet I could shake every part of my body at the rave for hours and hours and hours? And every time I worship the devil and serve the devil, I was never distracted. I was never interrupted. But the moment, I'm going to tell you why. Because the devil knows the power of you focusing on what God can Come on, help me real loud in this house. The devil knows the power. If you'll lock in tonight and say, I'm leaving free. I'm leaving healed. I'm leaving saved. I'm leaving delivered. And I'm bringing my kids out with me. I'm bringing my marriage out with me. I'm bringing, I ain't playing devil. It's too hot in here. You're soft. You're soft. I mean, really, we forget where we've come from. We forgot the hours and hours with track marks down our arm. You'd walk four miles with your feet blistered up on a three-day high to go find the next 
piece of crystal to get high on a girl's bike you'd ride four miles down the road and now you're all sanitized and now you're all clean Gabe said I used to ride a girl's bike to church don't shout too loud and you're all clean and all washed up and you got your little button up you didn't even wear a shirt before and you got your button up and now you're too soft and I'm I'm just hot brother and it's just too much effort and too much work if you could ride a girl's bike for four miles to get the next high you're telling me you can't knock on your neighbor's door and say the gospel is alive and well the power of God has visited you today I'm embarrassed to cast out demons you weren't embarrassed to invite them in you weren't ashamed why is it that we're so comfortable in the presence of darkness but uncomfortable in the presence of God completely content with sitting out in the movie watching people fornicate completely content while everybody gossips about the church everybody gossips about this and gossip about that completely fine uh, not uncomfortable at all when everybody's mocking God making dirty things watching dirty movie talking dirty at work you blend right in when everybody else is acting like the world uh, and you are a secret agent of an undercover Christian uh, that thinks God has called you to be a secret agent uh, you think God has called you to live Sunday to Sunday to Sunday and never open up your mouth about the the gospel and friend I would rather you be mad at me tonight and love me when you get to heaven than be happy tonight and hate me when you get to hell I will not live my life Sunday to Sunday with a pacifier I hear the Holy Ghost saying it's time to spit the pacifier out you're 18 years old it's time to grow up for some of you put on your big boy pants and do the work 18. I don't know why, Pastor. We have to do all 18 years, and God says, Where's the fruit in your life? Now, we don't need to talk about the church because if you open up your eyes and look around, this church has done far more than most churches will do in 100 years. 18 years, this church has been given the devil no rest. 18 years, this church has been laying hands on the sick and watching them recover. 18 years, they've been going into the prison cell of people's drug addiction and pulling them out by the power of God. 18 years, this family has laid down their life and we shout and scream and God says, what have you done in 18 years? What have you done? Where's the fruit in your life? Somehow we've got off thinking I can go to the gym, watch other people work out and convince myself I'll get in shape by watching other people. Somehow I've convinced myself that I could treat the church like Broadway but still walk on the narrow road. And some of you will get that on the car ride home. Somehow I think I can treat the church like a movie theater and I could watch Pastor Marco and Pastor this and Pastor that and do this and do that. And as long as I just come to the events, you know, the devil comes to the events. So don't think that you're that because you come to the event. Well, I believe in Jesus and enough the Bible says the demons believe and the demons tremble when have you trembled the demons tremble when Jesus came up they got on their knees and began to worship him and we have to beg you and convince you to get on your knees and worship and when have we trembled in the conviction of the Holy Spirit when's the last time you got in the secret place and said God I, I want so badly to encounter you and all of a sudden somebody stepped in the room that you knew was not from this world and you went in there a jacked up screwed up messed up beat up busted and disgusted beat up from the feet up tore up from the floor up you were all messed up with every dysfunction and you went in the worst husband in San Bernardino and you met with a God that said, I can change it all. And you walked out of your prayer room, the most loving, kind husband the earth has ever seen. I'm not talking about five-minute mamsy pamsy prayer. I'm talking about locking yourself in the secret place and saying, I'm not leaving until you show up. I'm not leaving till you change me. I'm not getting off this altar until God alters me. I'm not walking out of this building. How do we week after week walk in? addicted and walk out addicted and then we do altar calls and the drug addicts come forward praise the Lord and they're 10 times more radical than you in the first week and you've been here 18 years and you sit forward going praise the Lord look at them getting delivered I don't need deliverance that's a demon telling you that that's a demon 
God does not say, oh, you're fine, you're good, you don't need to get free. God is not the one keeping us in our chair every single week when there's an optional altar call. And this is what blows my mind in the American church. I've preached in almost 500 churches. That is not a weird flex. I'm letting you know I know what I'm talking about. We make them sit through the music. We make them sit through the offering. Nobody has a choice. You don't get to get up while we're doing an offering and go home. We make you sit through that. It's not optional. We sit here and preach, and you got to sit. And then at the very end, we give the Holy Spirit five minutes. We go, okay, Holy Ghost, this is your slot and you know what um we don't really you don't have to and i mean it's optional like nothing in our have you thought about this nothing in service is optional but the altar call we go hey you know if you feel like coming forward if you struggle with pornography on tuesday nights uh, then you can come forward but if not you're good we'll have a nice day and we come in and we come out and we come in and we come out and we come in one way and we leave the same way we come in one way and the more listen to me tonight church this is prophetic the more we come in and don't change and leave unchanged the easier it is to live the unchanged life you become numb to the conviction of the holy spirit and now your heart gets hardened the bible says and now it's harder to get you to the altar it's harder to get you to deliverance it's harder to get you to recognize that you need freedom that you need healing that you're not doing what Jesus did and all I'm saying is imagine if you gave God the time you gave TikTok imagine I don't have the time brother but your Netflix account says otherwise like you've Four seasons you've watched. I mean, at what point do we say, God, I'm getting alone in the secret place. Why? Because there are real people at stake. Here's what Paul said. Paul said, I am in debt. This is what I've seen in this church. Your pastor, I came here four years ago. I've been here three or four times in the last five or six years. And I'll tell you what I see. I see leaders and pastors that are indebted to the broken and hurting people of this city and of this world and say that I don't have a choice. I don't get the luxury of coming in here and being complacent. I don't have the luxury of coming in here and not lifting up my hands and giving God everything. I don't have the luxury of taking a week off from God and saying, oh, I'm sorry, Pastor. I can't make it to the anniversary services. My Disneyland, my Disneyland pass, I have to hit 90 visits before it expires. And so I got to go for the 88th time this year. No, we have to have some people that say, I am indebted to the people of this city. That means I don't get to choose. I I have to be at the prayer meeting. I have to be at the revival. I have to. Why? Because people depend on my obedience. What happens, Pastor, when someone in our family commits suicide? We say, man, it was so sad. And, you know, so-and-so or Uncle Tony killed himself. And it's so sad. We go to the funeral of the pastor. Oh, he was a great man and went to a great place. And we all know he wasn't and he didn't. And we sit there and we never even think about the fact that I could have cast those demons out of him. When are we, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. This is oil coming out of me. It's not sweat, don't worry. When are we going to get to the place where you're angry when your family members die prematurely? Where you're angry. When are we going to have to have another headline, another drive-by shooting? We had a kid in our city years ago that was demonized, that went to the biggest church in our city. I know this on record. And said, I have thoughts of killing my family. I have a demon, I think, in me. I need to get out of me. But because the churches of America are softer than Starbucks, are so soft, so complacent, so weak, so anemic, no backbone. Oh, we don't do that at this church. We don't believe in what Jesus Jesus did. We don't believe in the Bible. We don't actually believe we're supposed to do what Jesus did. We just pretend and we just praise and we live in boot camp. And so they kick him out saying, oh, we don't really deal with that. We don't really do that. And the next day, headline paper, boy shoots his father, shoots his mother, shoots his sister, and then shoots himself. And nobody is broken enough in the church to say maybe we're missing something when people are coming in our building with real unclean spirits and we allow our denominational demon, I mean denominationalism we allow our lukewarm water down carnal tradition to stop the power of God I'm telling you when Jesus shows up he said demons will be cast out miracles will happen people will be born again the world is begging us for deliverance and pastors have more faith in pills than they do in deliverance Oh, well, this is what they say. You come to them, oh, pastor, I'm hearing voices. I'm hearing this. I'm going through this. And you know what most of them are going to tell you? Most of the leaders, these are the generals of the faith in America. And I've had them write me, and I've taken heat. Trust me. I say, not everything's a demon. Not everything might not be a demon, but to you, nothing's a demon. 
I would rather treat everything like a demon, watch this, and then I know they're gonna make YouTube clips high, and I would rather <laughs> treat everything like a demon and then pray for you and go, oh, it wasn't a demon, than to treat nothing like a demon and let the devil, devil live rent-free in the church, live tax-free in the church. I'm telling you, somebody needs to be the Holy Ghost IRS and say, I'm taxing the devil. I'm ch at least charge the devil rent. Why are we freely letting him do what he wants not on my watch I've been given the ministry of interference of interference that's your calling what is the ministry of interference the ministry of interference says I get in the way of the devil the devil has it all mapped out and he has his plan and strategy and then the church builds a little fire here in the corner and basically says this, the devil has no power. I thought about this today as I was praying in my hotel room. I heard the Holy Spirit say, Isaiah, where does the Bible say the devil has no power? Because I've said that pastor a million times, the devil has no power, we, can, we have freedom. And we just shout and scream and then go home and watch pornography. Really, we go home and pastors, the biggest pastor in America, cheat on their wives, sleep around, or drinking. But I've been in the meetings, friend, where the biggest pastor in America are at the bar getting drunk after. And they say, oh, the devil has no power. And we preach it and say it. But the problem is the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air. The Bible says he's the prince of the demons. The Bible says he's the God of this world. Now, Jesus said he has no power in me because me and him have nothing in common. And the more I have in common with his king, Kingdom. Help me, Holy Ghost. The more, uh, can y'all hear me in the back? The more power that the devil has over me. Who has more power, the Holy Ghost or the devil? And then we say, well, the Holy Ghost does. So then why don't you pray? Why don't we fast? Why don't we read the Bible? If the devil has less power than God, why do we spend four hours watching girls in bikinis dance on TikTok and spend five minutes in prayer and then get so bored we have to go get food after and we fall asleep five minutes, but the devil has no power, yet the devil's flexing on the church and God says, I have given you the answer. I've given you all authority. I've given you all power. I've given you the keys. Peter, what are you doing? I've given you the keys. What you bind on earth shall be bound in the heavenlies. What you lose, come on, where are my spiritual snipers? Where are my spiritual Navy SEALs? Where, who am I preaching to? Today is the day to be armed and dangerous. I'm your worst nightmare, Satan. Oh, you wanna mess with my kids? You done messed up this time. What have we got to a place where the devil said, I ain't touching her. Every time I try to wreak havoc in her home, she's oil on the doorways. She's calling things out. She's prophesying. She's decreeing and declaring. She's one of those Holy Ghost ninja grandmas that's up at midnight when you walk in staring at you at the door. Say, one day you're going to be a preacher. One day you're going to prophesy. I'm one of those guys that ignored my grandma. But the hounds of heaven chased me down. Jehovah stalker followed me home and said, "You, I'm getting you because you're mom. And you, I can't to tell a parent don't stop praying for your kids don't stop praying for your grandkids don't stop praying for your marriage God says no more having nightmares of demons it's time for demons to have nightmares of you where you set foot out of the bed and the devil gets a migraine where the devil has to get a Isaiah Saldivar vaccine where the demons tell the other demons have you been vaccinated yet because Isaiah is in town and he ain't playing, and he's more viral than the C word. I can't say it because they'll flag us on YouTube. He's more viral than the pandemic. These Christians, I'm telling you, you think sickness would get on them, but they get on sickness. See, Jesus wasn't afraid of touching lepers because he knew that leprosy doesn't get on me. Healing gets on you. It's not that what I touch, I get unclean. It's the unclean gets clean because there is an invisible kingdom. Oh, I wish I had somebody that says, I am enlisting in the army of God tonight. I been given the ministry of interference and we're going to interfere with the devil like never before the devil's planning but guess what so are we we do these events 
and uh, we did an event a few weeks ago, 3,000 people in Texas, mass deliverance, okay? So we're not, we're not ashamed, we're calling it mass deliverance. If you come, then don't be scared, because there's gonna be thousands of people, and we do these events, 3,000 people, and they're all vomiting, screaming, all this at one time, and we're taking back territory. God is saying mass deliverance. We don't have time to do thousands of people one by one, the power of God, the spirit of God, the finger of God, and you know, people come pastor to our meetings, and they come with their little voodoo, and their little witch doctor, and one time we were in New York, and they locked themselves in the bathroom, and they put nasty stuff everywhere, and they put chicken wings in there, their little dead chickens, and I told the team, go get those chicken wings, let's put some lemon pepper on them, we're going to have some dinner tonight, we're not afraid of your chicken wings, we're not afraid of your, sin. well, we're here on, I had people come, I'm a witch, I'm here on assignment, I said, baby, the problem is, you're not the only one on assignment, I'm also on assignment, I've been sent by God himself, and I've been called to interfere with you, so whatever little new age witchcraft you're trying to do, I come to interfere. I've been given the power of God. The same spirit that raised Christ is living in me. I am the how, that, you know the Holy Spirit's address is me? I'm the address of the Holy Ghost. I don't know where to find God. Jesus goes, you look there, you look there, he's within you. I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit whose name is holy. I, I said this the last few places I preach, and God blew my mind with this. It's such a simple revelation. Pastor's like, duh. Is that the Holy Spirit's name is holy. I didn't know this. I thought his name was Holy Spirit. And then I realized spirit is a description, not a name. A spirit is not a name. It's a description of something. His name is holy, and we think we could have the Holy Spirit and live unholy lives. Here's what David said. The first time we see the mention of the Holy Spirit in the Bible, when he sinned with Bathsheba, he looked up and goes, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me, because he recognized, he wasn't arrogant to think, I could live whatever filth I want to live, I could watch whatever music I want to watch, or movies I want to watch, I could listen to whatever music I want to listen to, and still do whatever I want. What gave Jesus power in the supernatural realm is that he walked a sinless, blameless life, and that when the demon showed up, Jesus looked at it and said, you don't have power over me, because me and you have nothing in common and when Jesus showed up the demon spoke out and say why are you interfering with us before the time here's what the devil was saying just give me a little bit more time do you know what the, the devil's whispering in your ear tonight give me a little bit more time this is what the young people of our generation think. I'm just going to wait. This is why I used to say, I'm going to wait till I'm 35, sleep with as many girls as I can, drink as much as I can, do whatever I want, and then when I have a few kids and I get married, then maybe I'll consider going back to church. And the devil keeps whispering that to our generation. And there's many of you, and listen, I say this soberly, I have no glasses, so you all look like fog to me, okay? I can't, I'm the, he was staring right at me, and you delete me on Facebook, it's okay, praise the Lord. Here's what I want to say to you. Some of you 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old and you still give the devil more time and you go one more year let me just do my thing and kind of mess around and all this stuff and and God says your next breath is not promised to you you're on you're not eternity is not 30 years in front of you eternity is next to you at any moment you can slip into eternity and if right now you're playing games you're gambling with your eternity the same way they gambled over Jesus's robes the church is gambling over the covering of Jesus Jesus says I'm gonna clothe you in righteousness and you think this is some fun game where you can kind of just do what you want. You can kind of never have any fruit in your life. You could kind of never pray for the sick and never preach the gospel and live a fruitless life. And God one day is going to say, well done. But the question is, what have you done? What have you done? Well done, good and faithful servant. And a lot of people will never hear that because they've done nothing for God. And the problem is not, here's what we like to do in the church. We like to look at the problem of why there's no fruit in our life, why there's no growth in our life, why I'm not seeing miracles, why I'm not seeing deliverance, why I'm not seeing signs and wonders, why I'm not praying, not fasting. This is the most of the church. And we don't know who to blame, so the best person to blame is the guy on the stage. And so we say, oh, it must be that guy. It's not me. I'm not the reason why I don't pray. I'm not the reason why I don't fast. I'm not the reason why I don't cast out demons. It's not my fault. It's 
it's the pastor's job. He's the one that didn't give us evangelism on Thursday nights. He's the one that didn't have deliverance services for me to attend. He's the one that didn't have a prayer meeting for me to show up to. He's the one that didn't have a Bible study. And so we point to the pastor. And the problem is in Luke chapter 8, it tells why there's no fruit. And the problem is because the soil is bad. The Bible says the seed, which is what the pastor plants. Do you know our job as pastors is to pray and read and spread the seed and that's it? We, all, we work overtime. Our job is to plant the seed and your job is to go out and produce fruit and to do good works. That's why this church is the way world outreach. We're not an in-reach church. It's not about you. I know you think it is. Beautiful building. It is not about you. It is about empowering you. To be, is this, the, come on, am I at the right? I just got to make sure I'm not at St. Anthony's tonight. It is about empowering you to go do the work of the ministry and we have failed if you're not out doing the work. God is saying, don't don't live your life in self-deception, thinking I could hear a powerful message every week but have no fruit. So we look at our branches and go, no deliverances this week. No miracles this week. I've been angry all week. I've been stressed all week. I've had anxiety and pill after this and depression and sickness and disease. And we look at our branches and we go, there's no fruit in my life. And we come to church with no fruit. And we go, oh, we're a Christian. We're planted. And God says, you're not connected to me. You're connected to the world. Your branches are dead. You're withered. There's nothing produced. See, as a Christian, I, I know it's a strong message, but they invited me and we're friends and we'll, I'll probably get invited back regardless. So praise the Lord. I got to preach what God is telling me to preach. Because when I lay my head on the hotel pillow, it's about did you say what I called you to say, not what they wanted you to say. And many of us walk around fireless, fruitless, passionless because we're prayerless. We don't pray. We're not connected. I don't know why my phone's always dead because you never plug it in. Come on, ladies. Someone said, my wife, come on, preach. Your phone's always dead because it's never plugged in. And you think you're going to be fired up and alive doing deliverances, casting out devils, and healing the sick when you never plug into the true power source. You never, the Bible says this, in 2 Corinthians, I believe it's 420, the kingdom of God is not just about talking. This is not what it's about. It's not just talk. It is talking, and it, talking is powerful because how will they hear unless we preach? i got to be clear on that. But it's not just talk. It's actually about power and demonstration. You are actually creating to be power assisted you are called anointed appointed assigned consecrated set apart mandated by God to be assisted by the power of the Holy Spirit who is a person to do the works that Jesus did here's the kicker and even greater works and it is time to lay down the excuses and say I'm not going another year without fruit on my branches I'm not going another year without producing something I need to produce or God is going to cut me off. Oh, God's too nice to cut me off. Really? That's not what the New Testament says. And in and Sapphira drop dead, who do you think you are? You realize your next sin could be your last sin according to the New Testament? But we don't think about that. We sin freely without consequence. And we say, oh, Jesus, you cover me in your blood. You know what the Bible says about that? If you willfully continue on, there's no blood left for you. Some of you, the cup is empty. There's no blood because you go on and on and on. And you know what John says? He says, you're son of the devil. He says, you claim to be a son of God, but you practice sin. What is practicing? It means doing something over and over until you're good at it. How do you get good? How do you know if you're good at sinning? It doesn't hurt you anymore. You're no longer wounded. You come in here, Pastor Marco preaches. I watch him preach convicting, challenging, powerful sermons. And you walk, sit there and clap, but you're unmoved on the inside. And you don't repent, you don't change, and you continue on with the pornography, with the lust, with the division, with the distraction, with the worldly stuff and the culture. You open the door to demons and you believe, oh, well, Christians can't have demons. You're proof they can. Pastor said, oh, a Christian can't have a demon, brother. And I'm like, Pastor, you're the proof they can. The, a Christian could have whatever they want to have. Do you really think you can open the door to Jezebel and then get mad when she comes over to have a sleepover? You're at Delilah's barbershop hanging out every night, and then you're like, I don't think Christians, and you're getting a fresh fade from Delilah. Today is the day for you to say, I'm done going to Delilah's barbershop. I'm done having nap time with Bathsheba. I'm done letting Jezebel control me. It is time to break out. It is time to get free. It's not just time to be delivered, but God 
God says it's time to be a deliverer. Freely you've been given. Freely give. I believe the best days are ahead if the people of God will take their sword, take their shield. Tonight we're trading pacifiers for swords. Spit the chapone out. Come on. Come on, Mexicans. I'm Mexican. Spit the chapone out. Spit the binky out. Take the diaper off and say, I'm putting on the armor of God, not the diaper of the devil. Walking around like spiritual infants for 20 years. There's nothing cute about a grown man playing in the kiddie pool. Some of you, there's no, you're in the kiddie pool of Christianity with dead leaves. The Bible says the, the seed lands and the Bible says the devil comes and takes the word to prevent them from believing. The first enemy of our faith is the devil. Again, I don't know where we got off preaching the devil's not real, he has no power, just ignore him. Ignoring the devil will do nothing but make you live a casualty and a prisoner of war. I'm not going to live my life a prisoner. I've been anointed, I've been called, Paul said in Ephesians 6, I love how the living Bible says it. Our battle is not against people, this is what the living Bible says. Our battle is not against persons with bodies, but against persons without bodies. We are fighting entities, personalities, ghosts, spirits, demons. Call them what you want, don't matter. We are fighting real spiritual beings on a daily basis. And if we ignore it, we will become a casualty. But I believe that there is a generation of spiritual snipers that are going to see the devil from a mile away and say, not on my watch. I have come to interfere with you. You're not getting another minute. You're not getting another second. I'm not going another day without doing deliverance. Now, I, I'm st I know where I'm at. Don't stress. Here's why we don't do deliverance. Because our eyes aren't open to it. People say, oh, I don't have anyone that needs deliverance come to me. Yeah, and I've never taken my car to the dentist. Why would I go to you if you don't do deliverance? You think I'm going to go to my dentist and say, hey, can you change my oil? He'd say, you don't come here for oil change. You come here to get your cavity fixed. The same reason why Christians don't come to you for deliverance is because they know you aren't one that does deliverance. All you do is complain. And so if I want to complain, I don't know why everybody always complains to me because you're a complainer. Real recognize real. I don't know why everybody gossips around me because you're a gossiper and you like it. The next time somebody comes to gossip to you, say, does my forehead say trash can? then why do you think you can dump your toxic sludge and garbage in my mind when my mind is holy and I don't think about gossip, I don't think about bitterness, angry, complaining. Complaining would have got you killed in the Bible. But in the church, it gets you friends. I'm preaching strong. When you're around a certain spirit, spirits are attracted to spirits. That's why when you hang out with certain people, you change. Because their spirit and your spirit, they intermingle. If you put, oh, let me just prove this. If you put a gossiper on that side of the room and a gossiper on that side of the room and you're a pastor and you know both of those people got big mouth, I guarantee in two weeks they're going to find each other. That's true, pastor. You're going to say, oh, sister so-and-so is talking to sister so-and-so. How did that happen? Because a dysfunction attracts dysfunction. Holiness attracts holiness. If you want some on-fire friends, get the fire of God. If you want some deliverance friends, start doing deliverance. If you want to drive out demons, start advertising. If you need a devil cast out, I'm your guy because I'm looking for practice. Now... Jesus sent them to go cast out demons. There's nowhere in scripture where Jesus said, just wait and they'll come. No, they won't. The devil is afraid of you. He doesn't want to be around you. He sent them out to go cast out devils. And what happens in deliverance, this has happened to me, and I know how it is. We do deliverance. We get passionate, excited about it. And then all of a sudden, a week or two or three or a month goes by where we get, we get cold. We don't do deliverance. We don't get engaged. And then we kind of just forget about it. It's the devil's most hated ministry because it's a public display of a spiritual kingdom being destroyed. An atheist can watch a demon cast out. You don't need to have faith. You don't need spiritual eyes. And the devil hates it more than anything. Thing, and the church has bought in his lie that it's not for the body of Christ but the Bible says that deliverance is the children's bread that freedom come on I came to tell you that you don't have to live with suicidal thoughts you don't have to live addicted to pornography perversions coming out anxiety is coming out suicide is coming out fear is coming out God has not given you that spirit so when you start doing deliverance, you start seeing people that need deliverance. 
Don't ever say, I just don't know have anyone to do deliverance on. I'll, call me. I'll put you on my map, and you'll have 100 people tomorrow calling you. You'll be so overwhelmed. It is time for us to be so overwhelmed because God has us working day in and day out. It is time for us to come tired at night because not that we've been working for mammon, but because we've been working for the kingdom of God because I'm not fishing for money. I'm fishing for men. See, understand the devil's desire is to steal the word of God out of your faith out of your mouth, out of your mind to rob you of your God-given destiny and he'll do anything he can and he'll whisper in your ear, this isn't for you. Mark 16, these signs shall follow them that believe. Jesus, what is the first sign that's going to follow a real believer? They're going to cast out demons. Why? Because freely you've been given, freely you give. Because salvation does not mean you pray a prayer at an altar and then magically you get saved and you can do whatever you want the rest of your life. Salvation means to be delivered. This is, Google it. It's easy to Google. It means to be delivered. It means to be set free. It means to be protected. It means to be preserved. And it means to be healed. Salvation is not something you do with your eye closed at band camp, revival, Holy Ghost camp. Salvation is a working of God where God says, I don't just want to save your soul. I'm going to drive those demons out of you. I'm going to heal the sickness in your body. I'm going to renew your mind. I'm going to restore your soul. I'm going to give you a new spirit. You are going to be a new species. And now that I've been delivered, I'm a demon slayer, demon buster, Holy Ghost stomping, tongue talking. Ain't nothing going to stop me. Religion, you done gone too far and played too long. It's time to drive out demons. It's time to lay hands on the sick. It's time to preach the gospel. It's time to produce. I really feel this. I don't give these words ever. You could go watch my videos where I travel to churches. I don't ever give these. But I was in prayer, and it's not some crazy prophetic word. It's not deep, anything like that. You don't need a Greek thesaurus or anything like that. I really felt like I was praying, saying, Lord, what is this year about for this church? The 18-year anniversary. I, I spoke at the 14-year anniversary. Incredible. I'm in awe of what God is doing here. I love this family. I feel at home with this family. I said, God, what is it? And I felt the Lord saying, you could do what you want. You could ignore it. You could say, oh, whatever you want. I felt the Lord say, it's the year of production. It's the year of producing. It's the year for you to produce fruit for something to grow in your life. See, there's a story that you probably have never heard preached in Luke chapter 13 where the Bible says Jesus tells a story of a man planting a fig tree. And the Bible says the man, who's Jesus, plants the fig tree. And here's what the Bible says. And the man keeps checking on the fig tree. Friend, do you know that God checks on you? Do you know that God is looking at your life tonight and saying, is there fruit? And then God goes, and then God comes back and says, is there any fruit now? And then God goes away, and God comes back and God says, is there any fruit now? And then God goes away, and then God comes back and says, is there any fruit now? This is what the Bible says in Luke chapter 13. The man came, checked on the plant over and over, and the Bible says this. I know it's a strong message. The Bible says the planter was constantly disappointed because there was no fruit on the branches. Friend, do you know it's possible for God to be disappointed with us when he invested that's his holy, come on, it's all good, it's deliverance. Stay looking at me, it's all good, praise the Lord. We got about five minutes and we'll, it'll be the whole room, don't stress. There'll be plenty to see, okay? Do you know the Bible says that God will keep checking on us, that God will keep looking, and that if there's no fruit on our life, God's disappointed. In fact, if you look at the little boy that was demonized, the Bible says a demon was throwing him in the water and throwing him in the fire, and Jesus was on the mountain, Jesus came down, the man brought the boy to, the, to Jesus, said, hey, your disciples could not heal the boy, and Jesus looked at the disciples and said, you faithless generation, you untrustworthy generation. Here's what he was saying. I'm disappointed that I've been with you all this time. In other words, I'm disappointed that you've been in church for so many years, yet somebody brought you this easy thing, this easy demon, this easy problem, and you couldn't even cast the demon out when I've been with you all this time. So if I'm a Christian... Let's just say for more than a year. My first demon I cast out after three days of being saved. A friend of mine brought their mom who was a prostitute. And I didn't know nothing like you, Pastor, about deliverance. I was an atheist three days ago. And they brought her. They said, I don't know, but something's wrong with her. And she laid on my living room floor going, Aah! 
and I was like, I don't know what it is. And I thought I would have to look down her throat and see the demon. This is a true story. It's embarrassing. I've shared it only one other time. I got on top of her like I was riding a horse. I'm not lying to you. I'm innocent. I just got saved. I hadn't slept in three days. I was radical. I got on top of her like this on, on my knees. And I went and I opened up her mouth and I said, I see you down there. And I thought I was going to actually see the demon. So I was like, I know you're in there. You know, I was like, what is that planet of the apes back in the day where they're like, is there a soul in there? I was like, I know you're in there. Come out. And she was like, no. And I'm back and forth. And I'm like, I was an atheist three days ago. And so I didn't know. I thought I had to literally get the demon out of her. So I started choking her. I was like, come out. Choking her. And my uncle's like, don't do that. You're going to kill her. She's all purple. I was pressing on her stomach. I was like, out. And, I didn't, and, the, and then finally, I got learned and the Holy Ghost began to teach me and I began to learn deliverance. The point was, I began to go do the work. I said, God, I've been a believer for three days. If the Bible says I can cast out devils, uh, if the Bible says I can hit, come on, get jealous and say, if the Bible says it, I could do it. If Jesus said I could cast out devils. A week later, I called my mom. I was at Starbucks working and I had a vision. I said, I'm going to go, this is what I said. I said, I'm going to go get a potato sack. Literally, literally. I said, Mom, I'm going to go find a potato sack at Food for Less. And I'm going to wear a potato sack and sandals. And I'm going to walk on the corner of Main Street in Yosemite. And I'm going to preach that Jesus is coming back tomorrow. I wanted to be like John the Baptist. You know, he wore like sa a sackcloth, a potato. And I wanted, I was like, I'm going to go. I had a vision of me on the corner in front of Walmart. Jesus is coming tomorrow. I mean, there was that radical desire and tenacity. And it's laughable. I look back, I'm like, I was crazy. But then I realized I was crazy for Jesus. I was crazy to see see his name famous. Maybe some of you need to get crazy tonight. Maybe somebody needs to get undignified. Maybe somebody needs to unbutton one button. Only men, not ladies. Unbutton one button and say, I'm too dignified. I'm too sanitized. I'm too clean. I need to roll up my sleeves and get in the mud and drive out some devils and lay hands. Oh, oh come on. I want to do the work. I want to do the work. Constantly disappointed. Here's a question I want to ask you. Is God disappointed in you? Oh, Jesus loves me. He would never be. That's not what Luke 13 says. Constantly disappointed. Here's what he said. Watch this. Pay attention to this. This is one of the scariest verses in all of the Bible. The gardener, the planter, said to the gardener, the guy who planted the fig tree, that's Jesus, said to the gardener, that's Jesus, he said, let's chop it down. Here's why, here's why I want to chop it down. This is the reason. Are you guys ready for this? This is the epitome of the American church. It's just taking up space. That's it. It's taking up space and it's not producing anything. So there's really no reason for it to be here. Are you one of those Christians tonight? And I get chills when I say it because I feel the fear of God. You're just taking up space. You come week after week after week and there's no fruit in your life. There's no evidence of your salvation. There's nothing. There's no miracles. No, let's forget about deliverance, miracles. Pretend none of that matters. You don't do any of that. There's no action in your life that you're actually a Christian. You're just taking. He goes, I would rather have you not here than have you taking up space in my garden. Here's why. Because you make the garden look bad. Imagine if you go to somebody's garden. They're like, I have this beautiful garden. Come check it out. And everything's dead. Or everything's alive, but 10% of it's dead. What did a good gardener do? Let me take out the dead because when the world comes and looks at my garden, I don't want them to see a bunch of dead plants and say, why would I want to be like you? You're dead. I want them to say people that have life, that come on, Holy Ghost, that have passion, that have joy. It's about representing God properly. He goes, I don't like to, but Matthew 8, I cut off the branches that don't produce fruit. And where, here's where I throw them, in the fire. In the fire, they go to hell. Why? Because they're not producing anything. They're not true. Here's what it's about. They're not genuine disciples. They don't really follow me. And then he says this, in the same way, in Matthew 8, you can, you can tell a tree by its fruit. He says you could also tell a person by their actions. I know we say, oh, it's love and peace. That's what fruit is. The Bible says it's actions. So I could look at your life and say, okay, let me look at the last seven days of you. I'm not zeroing you. I'm not condemning you. Condemnation is not an emotion. It's a legal verdict. You're not condemned. Praise the Lord. You're not going to hell. And maybe. I could look at your life and say, where's the Christian action? What have you done? What have you done where you put your money? See, when God so loved the world that gave his only son, here's what John 3, 16 is about. The God who loved the world took action. 
God did not say, I love the world, so I'm going to condemn it. God said, I love the world, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send. I'm going to take action. I'm going to send my son. Here's what God is looking for. People that say, I'm not Christian in theory. I'm Christian in action. I'm a practitioner, and I'm going to take action, and I'm going to actually have fruit in my life so that God doesn't cut me off on judgment day. Now, Paul says, some will have no works, but will still be saved. And then he uses this word, barely. Bare Imagine getting online for Judgment Day. There will be a great line, and you're sitting behind the Apostle Paul. Like, oh, it's a great white throne judgment. What's your name? I'm Paul. Like, like Paul? Like, the guy in the Bible? Oh, yeah, I'm Paul, you know. Shipwrecked five times, stoned three times, you know, beaten, sick, dead. Oh, uh, yeah, all that, that's me. What, who are you? Oh, I'm Isaiah. Oh, what, what did you do for, I mean, uh. I went to church on Sunday. Paul's like, but I think you said you're a Christian. What is that? What do you mean you went to church on Sunday? Well, I went, but yeah, but what did you do for God? Well, I gave like 3%. I mean, I don't know. I just went. Paul's like, well, what did you do there? Well, we sang three fast songs, two slow songs, offering, you know, 20-minute message, and then there's this thing called an altar call. I didn't really go, so I don't know much about it, but, you know, people would go forward, and then God would touch them, and, and I kind of just did that. And Paul says, well, but what did you do like Monday through Saturday? It's like, well, I went to work. Well, what would you do for work? I worked, you know, at the police station down the road. So did you like witness to people? Did you fish for men? I mean, who, tell me, Paul goes, tell me some stories. I would, because Paul goes, I would love to be around in 2022. You guys had internet to reach the millions. What did you do? I mean, this is incredible. Tell me some stories, the new covenant, the pouring out. I mean, what did you do? And you're like, I don't have any stories, Paul. Because I'm not really a Christian. I just went to church on Sunday. I was more of like part of a country club. And you're literally next in line for judgment day. And here's what goes through your head. I'm barely saved. Now you might be saved. I'm not here to tell you you're going to hell. You might be saved. But Paul says, barely escaping the flames of judgment. When God throws all of your stuff, which he will, on judgment day. And this is in the Bible. Go read it. In the fire, there will be an eternal fire on judgment day. The only thing left in that fire is that which is eternal. And whatever is not eternal, the Bible says the builder will suffer great loss and will barely escape the flames of judgment. I am not interested in standing in line on judgment day thinking, I'm not sure if I'm going to get in. I don't really know. I mean, imagine talking to Daniel like, I, I was in the den of lions. What were you? Somebody made fun of me on Facebook. I mean... I, I, I danced for Jesus on TikTok one time. I mean, look at, guys, I'm being serious. Look at the fruit in our lives. We're prayerless. We're, we don't fast. We don't pray. We give into the appetites of Babylon in our flesh, and we work 40 hours a week for mammon. And praise the Lord, provide for your family. But you're doing nothing for your family if you can't provide for them spiritually. Cancel the overtime shift and say, I'm coming to the house of God because I'm a priest of my home and I got to know how to pray. Come on, worship team. Come up. Come on, worship team. He says this, constantly disappointed. He says, cut it off. Here's my word, and this is the whole message. I could have just gave it to you in one minute, but I had to do all the other stuff. Here's what he says. Cut it off. And this is what the gardener, the gardener begins to argue with the, with the planter. The guy taking care of the plant is arguing with the guy that planted the plant. And he says this. He goes, hold on. Before you cut them off, this is the grace of God. He says, give them one more year. Hear me tonight. Everyone in this room, look at me. Give them one more year. One more year, he says, of special attention and fertilizer. And this is what he says. And if you come back in one year, this is in uh, Luke chapter 13, if you come back in one year and there's no fruit on the branches, go ahead and cut them off. Go ahead. And I read this story. I say, who are these characters? And God said, Isaiah, it's the justice of God and the mercy of God. The justice of God says there's nothing in your life worthy of repentance. I'm cutting you off. And the mercy of God says give them one more year. And the Bible says mercy triumphs over judgment. God did not come to the earth to judge it but to, or condemn it, but to save it. God's desire tonight is not that he would judge you and say, I'm cutting you off, you're going to hell, and you walk out condemned. God's desire is you to say, today is the day where I put on my big boy pants and I say, God, give me one more year. Give me, 
by 19, the 19 year anniversary, I will be in the same place and the same building and there will be so much evidence in my life. There will be so much action in my life. There will be so much fruit in my life that you won't even know, I won't even be the same person. You'll go, look at this guy. He went from being the very back to the very front. He has disciples with him. He's running a men's home. He planted a church. He's ministering to the block. He's out on the corner. He's handing out groceries. Every time the church is open, he's the first one here. He's the last one here. I don't even recognize him. Why? Because I gave my spiritual life special attention. Let me give you one more revelation. Your prayer life is not going to happen until you make it happen. I, Pastor Marco, I've never one day just been sitting there watching Netflix and then I just start praying randomly. You don't accidentally pray. I've never accidentally been like, oh, I didn't even realize I'm on a seven-day fast. Oh, praise the Lord. You don't accidentally fast. And here's another last one. You don't accidentally live holy. In a world where everywhere you go, they're v trying to vomit on you. I know it sounds graphic, but it's true. Where every agenda you can imagine, all the darkness, pollution in our generation, we have to be intentional about avoiding darkness and living the holy life. And God is saying it's time to give your spiritual life special attention it's time to pour fertilizer on your spiritual life and say God give me one more year Isaiah Saldivar stands here today and says God give me one more year friend do you know there's a real possibility that Isaiah Saldivar could stand before God if he's not careful and God say who are you imagine hearing those words from God the worst words you could ever hear who are you and say I had a million followers. I had a million. I had a golden play button on YouTube. I preached with Ryan Arbonke. I mean, I'll just go down my list of my whole resume of everything I've ever done for God. And God says, I didn't ask that. I said, who are you? Because I, I don't know you. You cast out devils. You did miracles. You prophesied. But I never knew you. There was never a connection. And here's the key. If there's no intimate connection, there's no fruit that will grow. A tree pastor doesn't sit I've never seen an apple tree go oh I really got to produce an apple today I just got to do it it's so hard an apple tree automatically produces because it's connected producing fruit is a byproduct of a life connected to Jesus and if there's no fruit in our life maybe we're not really connected to the God of the Bible maybe we're connected to the God that we've created in our minds John 8 last one Everyone, everyone's already standing. Nobody sat down. Praise the Lord. I was going to say, please stand, but you've all stood the whole time. Thank you. Your sore legs will thank me tomorrow. Some of you needed the workout. Praise the Lord. John 8 says that God cuts off those that don't produce, and this is the last thing I'm done. And God prunes those that do produce so they can produce more. There are some of you here tonight that love God, that are producing fruit, and you're saying, God, why are you cutting off this guy out of my life? Why are you cutting this girl out of my life? Why are you removing this job? Why are you, God says, I'm pruning you, not because I hate you, not because I'm mad at you, but because if you stay connected to that girl, come on guys, you better look at me tonight. If you stay connected to that girl, you'll never produce fully what I've called you to produce. If you stay in bed with that guy and you don't let me cut him off, then you'll never fully produce. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here tonight. And he says, I'm pruning branches. I'm cutting things off. Does it feel good? No. God has to always cut things off. I'm going like, I don't want to lose this God. And God says, you have to do it, Isaiah. I'm pruning you because I'm trying to produce more fruit. For 10 years, I traveled, preached, and then in the middle of 2019, for three months, God said, Isaiah, you're going to shut down all the stuff you're doing in your church, your pre all the stuff that everyone thinks is success, you're going to stop doing it, and you're going to go online. 2019, no such thing as the C word, okay? Y'all catching what I'm cooking, smelling what I'm cooking? There was no such thing. I said, God, I don't want to. I'm a Everyone's going to, really what I cared about was all my pastor friends thinking I was crazy because I thought I was crazy. And so for three months, I wrestled, you know, up at night praying. I don't know what to do. I, did, I was scared to tell my pastor because I was like, he's going to call me crazy. We can't just shut things. In. There's, it's never been done. You can't shut your stuff down to go online. Just stupid. Does, no one does that. And my uncle said, for three months, Isaiah, when I went to my pastor, 
He said, for three months, I've been wrestling at night because God's been telling me, you need to go online. You're going to reach millions. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And for three, so we went all in. I told my team, we had 70 people in our leadership team. I looked at all of them. I said, I love you. It's been a fun ride. I said, but God is telling me, I know you're thinking I'm crazy. I think I'm crazy. God is telling me to go online. I know it sounds weird. I don't even know what a podcast is, but God is saying I have to podcast and YouTube. Who even knows? I said, so if you don't want to join me, there's great churches everywhere. Feel free. I don't care. I'm not one of those that needs to have all the sheep to my Myself, and I shut everything down and I went all in. I spent hundreds of hours learning about algorithms, lighting, studios, cameras. I didn't sit around going, well, God, if you're going to give me the word, you're going to do it. I said, no, I'm going to get off my lazy tail and I'm going to put the work in because I need to walk this word out. And I bought everything you can buy. I went to a prophetic conference and everybody said 2020 would be the year of perfect vision. Boy, they missed that. 2020 would be the year of uh, dominion for the church and the Hebrew count. I mean, I heard all the words and they, you know, and I won't name all the people. They're all the famous prophet people at this conference. I've been doing this conference every year. And they said, Isaiah, what's the word? And I had the mic and I said, all I know is God is saying internet revival and living room revival. And everybody looked at me like, and I already know pastors because I preached in hundreds of churches. At the end, they were like, eh. Basically, like, you missed it, dude. That was not the word of the Lord. I mean, you're in a mega church saying living rooms and internet. I mean, that's, like, the worst thing to say in a mega church. And I got calls, like, hey, dude, just checking in. I saw that you're going online and shutting all your stuff down. Are you okay? Do you need a therapist? I mean, I had friends of mine that genuinely thought I lost my mind. And guess what? I did, too. But here's the one thing I could go to bed at night well, saying, God is telling me to do this. I've never been so sure of something in my life, well, maybe other than marrying my wife, but I've never been more sure of my life than God is saying to do this. So January, I was like, hi guys, I'm awkward and I'm live streaming, I don't even know what to do. But I went live because God said to do it. And then all of a sudden, March comes around, I'm sitting in the Dallas airport. Mind you, God also told me in January to start a partnership. I never wanted to do partners. I'm like, that's dumb. People give monthly. Why? I don't. All my friends said, you'll never survive traveling. I never did partners in 10 years. January 2020, God said, start partners. I said, why? He said, just do it. So I didn't really announce it. I said, hey, if you want to partner, you can. Praise the Lord. That's all I'm going to say. March comes around. I'm sitting in the Dallas airport, and I have three events in Texas, large events, booked. I'm booked pretty much the whole year at this point in 2020. And all of a sudden on the TV, Donald J. Trump. We've never done this before in history, but we're shutting America down. The borders, the wall, everything. Everyone stay at home. And I'm in the Dallas airport, and all of a sudden, things start clicking. Wait a minute. Living rooms? Internet. We're all shut down. There's no churches able to meet. Nobody can go anywhere. And I went home. The American Airlines, all three pastors called me within 15 minutes. Your event's canceled, go home. I spent all day in the Dallas airport, flew home. I was laying in bed that night. It was like late at night, and I sat there. And within the matter of two days, every single booking of the year, which, by the way, pays my bills. I had no nothing else out. It was just traveling. Every single event was canceled within three-day period. My entire year was canceled. And my wife and I sat there, and I said, wait a minute. Internet, living... All that I went through, all the craziness, all the, God, are you sure? I don't know. Why would I do this? I don't want to do it. All was that a year ahead, God was preparing me. God was planning, saying, Isaiah, I'm not going to leave you dry, but I have something greater. And guess what? Last week, we hit one million followers for the glory in two years. And now we're reaching four million people every single week on social media. Four million every single week. Why? Because I said, God, I'll be the crazy one. Laugh at me. People made videos about internet living room. How cute is that? In the, and God says, if you'll be obedient. What is God saying to you tonight? What is God calling you to do? What is he calling you to start to produce fruit? The only fruit I have in my life is because I stayed connected. If I would have disconnected and kept preaching and filling up buildings and doing everything I was doing, I would have never been standing before you. I would have never been, I wouldn't have survived through what we went through. But God says, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to mark you. I'm going to mandate you. If that is you tonight, you say, Lord, I need one more year. I want you to find a place at this altar or wherever you're at. Maybe we don't have room for you. I want you just to say, Lord, give me one more year. Give me one more year. Friend, within one year, my life drastically changed. Give me one more year, God. Come on, some of you need deliverance in this house. This is the prayer team right here. Wow, you guys are on fire. Let's go. You need deliverance in this house. You need healing in this house. Look at this prayer team, armed and dangerous, spiritual snipers right here. Not playing right now. 
You say, Isaiah, I need breakthrough. I need one more year. I need to get free from all this stuff, every sickness, every demon I need to get free from so that I can do what God has called me to do. You will struggle if you live your life bound as a Christian. Tonight, God is saying it's time to break the cycle. You don't need Isaiah to lay hands on you. You need a touch from the Holy Ghost. Find a place if you can. Maybe we need to push the chairs back. Tonight is your night. Prayer team, come on, guys. There's tons of room up here. Come on. Move in, move in, move in. Move in. Thank you, Lord. You guys can play music softly here. Thank you, Lord. Freedom in this house, God. One more year to bear fruit. You are a deliverer. You are a healer. God has called you, and God has anointed you for such a time as this. You will, you will actually offend me if you try to wait for me to pray for you. You'll offend me. This is not about a man. This is about Jesus. You do not need a celebrity guy or whatever you think I am, which I'm not, to lay your hands on you. You need Jesus. He's the one we came for. He's the one that we exalt. He's the one that heals. He's the one that delivers. The only thing I've saved is $100 switching to Geico. That's a true story. I can't save you. I can't heal you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, if you need deliverance, if you need healing, come up to this altar. And we're going to begin to pray for you. Father, right now we pray you begin to deliver. You begin to heal. Come on, it's time to give your spiritual life special attention. Come on, it's time. Come on, prayer team, just work, get in where you fit in. It's time to give your spiritual life special attention. We command every unclean spirit. We command every foul spirit, every curse. It tonight, in Jesus' name, is being broken. We command every spirit, come out now and go into the abyss in Jesus' name. Every foul spirit, let God's people go in Jesus' name. Every spirit into the abyss now in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every disease, the healing power of God. Lord, you are a healer tonight. Father, we pray healing. We pray healing. We pray deliverance. Some of you, you are a deliverer. Say, God, yes, I will be a deliverer. I will be a healer in Jesus' name. I will go into my community. I will go into my family. I'll be the one to do the work. Give me one more year, Lord. Give me one more year. I'm saying yes to what you've called me to do. Say in your bound in Jesus' name. Every unclean spirit bound in Jesus' name. We command you out of their mouth into the abyss right now. Out of their mouth into the abyss in Jesus' name. Every generational curse broken in Jesus' name. You're bound, Satan. Let him go. Come on. Let him go. Pride, let him go. Fear, let him go. Anxiety, suicide. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. Go now. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Come on, don't be ashamed. Let it out. Come out. Come out. Begin to pray, say, Lord, deliver me. Lord, heal me. Cancer, be healed. Sickness, right now. We commend bodies be healed in Jesus' name. Bodies be healed in Jesus' name. Cataracts in the eyes are dissolving in Jesus' name. Somebody has swollen lip nodes. Right now, swollen lip nodes are being healed right now. Come on, chemical imbalances, hormone imbalances are being healed right now. If you need healing, obviously there's too many people for us all to lay hands on you. If you need healing, lay your hand on your body part and let the Lord heal you right now. Thank you, Lord. High blood pressure. Be healed. Fear of death. We command that spirit of fear to come out right now. Fear of death. Come out right now. Psoriasis. Somebody's getting healed of psoriasis right now in Jesus' name. Somebody's getting healed of blood disease right now. Blood disease be healed right now. Go now. Spirit of infirmity, go now in Jesus' name. Spirit of infirmity, go now in Jesus' name. We break the power of divorce. There's some of you, you have a generational curse of divorce. 
We break it now. Somebody needs to tell the devil, it ran in my family until it ran into me. It stops now. Break the curse. Alcohol ran in my family till it ran into me. Drug addiction ran in my family until it ran into me. I'm the curse breaker. I'm breaking the curse of my family. The blood of Jesus breaks the power of the curse. Oh, come on, there it is. Voodoo, broken in Jesus' name. Witchcraft. Come on, there's new age, new age strongholds are being broken right now. New age demons, Kundalini, broken in Jesus' name. Come out, every yoga demon, come out. Come on. All witchcraft broken now in Jesus' name. Satan, you've lost this battle. This is the house of God, Satan. We ain't playing your games. Up and out in Jesus' name. Come out of these people now. Come on, freedom reigns. I hear the Lord saying, freedom reigns. Children are being delivered right now. Rebellion. We command the spirit of rebellion out of our children. We command the spirit of homosexuality out of our children now. Spirit of confusion, out in Jesus' name. Spirit of perversion, come out. Come out. Come out. Come on, prayer team. Move your way through the crowd, prayer team. Move your way through the crowd, prayer team. Perversion is leaving you right now. Fear of death, spirit of disease and death. Broken now in Jesus' name. Up and out in Jesus' name. Up and out in Jesus' name. Somebody named Leonardo is being healed right now. Is there a Leonardo? Where are you at? Wave at me. God is healing you, Leonardo. Thank you, Lord. God's healing you right now. Praise the Lord. I heard the Lord say, I'm healing Leonardo tonight. You're being healed, brother, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Healing power of God. Come on, the Holy Ghost is doing the work. You don't have to have someone lay hands on you. The Holy Spirit is moving through the crowd. Deliver us tonight, Lord. Heal us tonight, Lord. Come on, we're not ashamed of the power of God. Drug addiction. Come on. If you're dealing with drug addiction, wave at me. Drug addiction, wave at me. Come on, wave at me. Wave at me, drug addiction. Are you ready to get free tonight? Come on, wave at me if you're dealing with drug addiction. Are you ready to get free? In Jesus' name. Come on, right now I hear the Lord saying, I'm removing the spirit of addiction. Methamphetamines, cocaine, heroin. I command right now, spirit of addiction. Come out in Jesus' name. Spirit of addiction. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Every curse of addiction. Drug addiction. The Lord says no withdraws. No withdraws. Come out now, you foul spirit. Come out now, you foul spirit. Drug addiction. Come out. Come out. Come out. Spirit of death, we break your power. If you, if you visualize yourself dying, you have visions of you dying, wave at me. Come on, look at all over this room, wave at me. If you have visions of you dying, that's a spirit of death. That's a spirit of death right there. The Bible says Jesus delivers us from the fear of death. That's what the Bible says. Right now, God's going to deliver you from a spirit of death and the fear of death. Are you ready? Put your hands up. Put your hands up all over this room. All over this room. I command right now the spirit of death and the spirit of fear. I command you now in Jesus' name to come out and to go into the abyss now in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Go. 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 
There it is. Come on. Out of their mouth now. Out. There it is. Come on. Mass deliverance tonight. Out of their mouth in Jesus' name. Into the abyss you go, you foul spirit. You foul spirit. I'm going to say something right now. I want you to hear me. Nobody talks about this. Please hear what I'm about to say. This is real. There is many men in this room right now, listen to what I'm about to say, that have same-sex attraction. Men. You're attracted to other men. You're not a homosexual. You're not bi. You, nobody knows this. But you have thoughts. You never do it, but you have thoughts, perverted thoughts about other men. You don't have to wave at me. I'm going to tell you why you got that. Pornography. Pornography. When you watch pornography, you open yourself up to a spirit of perversion. Perversion means the wrong version of something. Men and men is the wrong version. Are you guys get, getting it? Women and women, wrong version. A lot of guys that I deal with struggle with same-sex attraction because they watch pornography. You're like, I don't know why one day I started having sexual thoughts about men. It's because you're watching pornography. It's a perverted spirit. Are you ready to get free tonight? Nobody talks about this. It's real. Are you ready to get free right now? No more thoughts of the same sex anymore. That is a perverted spirit you let in through pornography. The number one selling pornographic material is lesbian pornography. It's the number one selling. And guys watch it and that spirit comes into them and now they have, they have desires for other men. It's real guys, we don't talk about this in the church, but guess what, there's a greater reality and it's called Jesus Christ delivering you from those unclean spirits, those foul spirits. So if that's you, get ready right now. If that's you, get ready right now. I command in Jesus' name, every spirit of perversion, every spirit of homosexuality, every same sex attraction spirit, I command you right now, to be bound, to be bound in Jesus' name and to come out of them and go into the abyss right now. Go, go, perversion, go. There it is, there it is. Perversion, go in Jesus' name. This is the Acts 8 church right here. This is what happened in Acts chapter eight. Many people got delivered and there was great joy in the city. Spirit of perversion, go right now. Spirit of perversion, go right now. You have no power. Spirit of anger, some of you get angry, your blood boils. That's a spirit. Spirit of anger, we call you out right now. You have no power. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. Come out right now. Come out right now. Now listen, some of you are sitting around going, I don't know about all this. Stay bound. Stay bound. I don't know if this is biblical, stay in bondage. We don't, it's on you. This is absolutely the first thing Jesus did in Mark chapter one. Mark 139, he went from synagogue to synagogue, casting out demons. There is freedom in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. This is the Bible tonight. What happened there is happening tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, there's freedom. There's freedom. Every curse is broken. We break every generational curse in Jesus' name. All witchcraft, all hexes, all spells. I want to say this to somebody. I want to say this to somebody. You did not sell your soul to the devil. Look at me. There's people in this room the Lord shows me is showing me. The devil, a, a, a demon came to you and said, sell me your soul, okay? And you signed a paper and you think that you're irredeemable. But here's what God is saying. Your soul don't belong to you, so you can't sell it. The Bible says in Ezekiel, all souls belong to God. So guess what? The devil's a liar. You didn't sell your soul. He wants you to think you did, so you'll never serve God. But today, every contract is being broken in Jesus' name. Every contract broken in Jesus name you did not sell your soul to the devil but I declare that you've given your soul to God that you've turned your life to Jesus and that you are born again the lies of the devil are broken in Jesus name thank you Lord
Friend, let me tell you right now, there's many celebrities right now in Los Angeles that are dying for deliverance. I had one of the top YouTubers on YouTube, 10 million subscribers, reach out to me for deliverance. And her friends are people like Kylie Jenner. Those are the people she hangs out with. And she says, Isaiah, we all need deliverance. I'll send my private jet to get you. I said, it's all good. I'll fly, you know, basic. Don't worry about it, you know. I'll take my private jet. No. Seriously, the people in Hollywood, listen to me closely, that are an hour away from you are dying for this tonight. They're waiting for you to become a deliverer so you can go set them free. Friend, we get celebrities writing us all the time. I want to get free from these demons. I sold my soul to the devil. No, you didn't. Your soul belongs to God, and God can break every demonic assignment. I say today that every demonic assignment is broken in Jesus' name. The devil's a liar. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray tonight that we would leave this place. We're not rushing you out, but I want to pray this before I, I, I'm done here. We leave this place deliverers. Don't play games anymore. One more year, God says you've been called. You've been anointed. They literally have a deliverance class at this church. So don't even try to stand on judgment day and say, I just didn't really know. You literally could take a class here to do deliverance. Don't be playing that. Father, forgive us for we do not know, God. Forgive us for our arrogance, our ignorance, and our apathy. Come on, right now. Pray that. Father, forgive us for our arrogance, our ignorance, and our apathy. Lord, raise it. Lord, we want to be the Christians that you've called us to be. Heal the sick, cast our devils, preach the gospel to produce production, producing fruit, producing fruit. Action, action, action. Come on, action, action, action. We don't want to be just hearers, God. We want to be doers. Holy Spirit, we need you tonight, God. We need you tonight, God. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. If you've never been baptized, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. Father, right now we ask you to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, God. We can't do this without your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Jesus. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom. Shapa sandala bakate. Hima robo shate. Rivers of living water flow. Rivers of living water. Those that thirst out of their belly. Come on. What do I got to do, Isaiah? You just got to thirst. Those that thirst out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. Ask me and I'll give you the Holy Spirit. Oh, shapa da samba kura bandete dikanda samba dokate. Never the same, God. Impartation tonight, Lord. Impartation tonight, Lord. Freedom. Freedom. Thank you, Lord, for freedom and deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for freedom and deliverance. We're going to sing a song in worship. I want you to, guys to just lock in with the Lord tonight. Say, God, I'm not leaving the same. I'm a deliverer. I've been called. I've been freed. I've been called. I'm doing this thing for real. This week, I'm finding somebody to do deliverance on. For real. For real. I'm calling my cousin, my aunt, my uncle. I don't care. I'm getting somebody free. I'm getting somebody free tonight. I'm going to cast some demons out. And you're going to come back like they did in Luke chapter 10 and say, it works. Even the demons obey us in your name. And Jesus is going to respond. I saw Satan fall like lightning. We have power over the enemy now. Does the devil have power? Yes, but we have more power. In fact, the Bible says we've been given all power. All power has been given to you. No more living off a dollar a day when you have a million dollar budget. No more living like you're poor in the spirit. You have a million dollars in your spirit. Come on, you have a million dollars in your spirit and you're living off a dollar a day. Thank you, Lord. Freedom, freedom. Darkness.
You know, as God is setting you free, He says, freely you've received, freely give it. It's, it's always inhaling and receiving and exhaling and giving. That's life. If you just inhale, you die. It's receiving it and giving it. Do you know why some Christians never grow they're only interested in receiving but it's in the giving is where you really grow Jesus the word of God says it's even more blessed than to give than to receive Jesus is not doing a work in you so you could just have a testimony and keep it to yourself He's doing a work in you so you could go out there and tell him what Jesus did for you and what he did for me, he could do for you. Let's pray. He said, go in the upper room. He didn't say stay in the upper room. He goes, go up there and don't leave until you're baptized, filled, empowered with my spirit. Because when the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit comes on you, it's going to give you power. It's going to give you what? Power to be a witness and tell people everywhere about Jesus. And you might be thinking, well, how do I do this? You receive it and you give it. Well, how do you cast out a demon? Real simple. Come out in Jesus' name. You don't do a miracle. God does a miracle. He just needs someone to lay hands, to speak up, and say something. How many know that He's the miracle worker? He's the deliverer. He just needs us to receive it and give it. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus! And, and for some of you, I'm going to tell you, there's a spirit that's hindering you from getting into position. You're always in the wrong place at the wrong time. You need to be planted in a church. If you're a Christian and you're going all over the place and you don't have a home church, you got a spirit of an orphan on you where you don't fit in anywhere. You got, I, I talked to Isaiah, he has a home church. It's really important that you know who your pastor is. Some of us don't want a pastor because you got daddy issues. And you don't want nobody telling you what to do. And you don't trust anybody. It's time to get set free from that right now. Someone needs to forgive your daddy and receive your heavenly father and allow the authority of God in your life. Come on. I renounce this spirit right now in the name of Jesus that renounces fathers in Jesus' name. I renounce every spirit I come against, every spirit of hindrance in the name of Jesus that's trying to stop God's people from progressing in Jesus' name. One more spirit I want to hit tonight. 
I ran into this, this demon, a guy that came to church, and this is what he did. He dropped off his kids to church. He dropped off his kids, and then he went out like we were their babysitters. He went out and did his thing, and then he would come back and pick up his kids. So no one could say, I didn't take my kids to church. He took his kids to church. He left church and picked up the kids. He came in to pick up his kids. And I go, come here, can I pray with you? As soon as I began to pray with him, he started manifesting a demon. And he went to the ground. He was screaming. And I go, who are you? And the demon said this. This is what he said. I want, I'm, I'm, I'm going to set you free from this tonight. He said, get me by. Get me by. I never heard a demon named get me by. I go, what do you do? He goes, I just allow him to do just enough to get by, but he don't do no more. There's a spirit that's trying to hinder you that won't allow you to fully commit. Just do just enough to get by. You don't get, you're not allowed to prosper. You're not allowed to commit. You're not allowed to be fruitful. You're not allowed to live in abundance. You're not allowed to have power because he don't let you do enough. I renounce right now. Come on, is any, come on. Are you ready right now? We're going to renounce this in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of hindrance, get me by spirit that doesn't allow God's people to be fully sold out to just do it. Father, Father, this spirit that stops people and only allows them to do just enough, just a little bit, but the Father doesn't allow them to fully commit. I command that spirit in the name of Jesus, go! Go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Something's going to happen. You're going to be set free from this and you're finally going to get on fire in your local church. Come on, you're going to start doing more than enough. You're going to find yourself not being hindered anymore. You're going to find yourself not quitting, not throwing in the towel. You're going to find yourself doing above and beyond because we serve a God that says, go to second mile. You're going to go to second mile and you're going to get your breakthrough. Give God some praise tonight if you received something from God. Isaiah, just, just final words real quick. I just want to reiterate what Pastor said. Get involved. The devil wants to isolate you. He wants you alone. You need to be a part of a church that you can grow in and be a part of. And freely you've been given, freely go give now. In Jesus' name, friend, don't spend another day waiting around for God to do what God's called you to do. One day God. No, God says now's the day. Now I'm going to do it tonight in Jesus' name. I love you guys so much. I can't wait to be back. I'm telling you, it's exciting time. Better days are ahead in Jesus' name. Come on. Love you guys. All right. This Sunday, come on. It's not just a Friday night. You used to do drug runs for days. It's time to do a run for Jesus. Sunday morning, get up, rise and early, show up to the house of God and hear a prophetic word from God. God's ready to do some great things in your life. And tonight is just the beginning. God bless you where we're now reach. God bless you online. Everybody in the overflow rooms. Have a great, great night. And remember this, if God's for you, there's no one that can come against you because he who is in you is greater than he.